really think that is that we've got some information that came back earlier this year from a Center for Effective Philanthropy report about evaluation results and the conversation that takes place or the conversation that doesn't take place between funders and grantees about those results. Their findings, and this was from a whole number of surveys that were conducted across, um, and I don't know the exact number, but a, a large number of foundations. They found that on average, grantees do not find it helpful, <laughs> do not find the reporting and evaluation processes to be helpful, especially in, the, in, the, in this latter piece, in strengthening their work, in informing their, the work of their organization and their processes. What I read into this is that they assume that you find it helpful, that they don't necessarily find it helpful for their work, but they assume it, that you're finding it helpful, and they're assuming you find it helpful. Why? Because only one half of funders are currently having any conversation after the receipt of the report with their grantees. Get the results, check the box, put it in the, in the, in the file cabinet or the shared drive, the intranet, and then you're good. Grantees, however, while they are a little bit pessimistic on, on the, the whole process right now, want this opportunity. They want the chance to be able to talk through the results with you and, and identify what they mean and, and what this and what should be done differently. This is precisely that kind of analysis and reflection that we're talking about. And those who do this report that there's value in having this conversation. When they do have the conversation, when there is the opportunity to, to talk through what this means, what the evaluation results mean, what needs to be decided, what needs to be done differently as a result of the findings, what are we learning, what needs to change, that they find value in this. So, like those conversations that we were talking about earlier around the kind of planning conversation, the five questions that we want you to ask, and, and, and testing their assumptions, all of that happening from the beginning and, and carrying throughout. Now that you're starting to get data back, that you want to have those same conversations. And I actually would um, stress that there's three conversations that you should be thinking about having once the, the data starts to come back. One, they need to have a conversation. They need to get the results, and they need to think about what it means for them. The grantees need to think about and reflect internally about what those results mean for their programming in a, in a micromanagement way that you probably don't need to be involved in your dynamic might change how they would talk about it when you're not there, that, when, when you're there. And so the, um, the, the first conversation that needs to take place is that you should talk to them about having that conversation, push them to have a conversation to reflect on the results and what it means and what it means for them. Then you need to, additionally, and there's not any kind of sequential order to this, you need to have a conversation with them. What does it mean for your relationship? What does it mean for the theory of change that you've got and those kind of concepts? What is it telling you about the, the assumptions that were made in that theory of change? What is it telling you about what else needs to be done? Um, what needs to change? What are you learning? And then finally, you internally at the foundation need to reflect on what these findings mean for you and your portfolio and your grant making and whether or not you want to make changes to your, your whether change is required to, to the grants that you're providing. So those three conversations that need to take place, three opportunities for reflection, analysis of reflection, within three kind of different dynamics, different bodies.